podcast listener, and welcome to What Scares Us, a podcast where four friends discuss the films that make us take risky night swims and hide under furniture curiously covered in white sheets. Today's film is 1981's The Prowler, directed by Joseph Zito. Let me introduce myself first, though. My name is Matt. I'm Christopher. I'm Amanda. And I'm Allison. Before we get into kind of our experiences with this movie and the deep dive, I'm going to share a few fun facts. So it was released internationally as Rosemary's Killer. Its German title was Die Fork des Totes. I might not be saying that right. Which translates to The Fork of Death. Oh, my. There are a number of fun poster taglines. It will freeze your blood is the most common one, which I don't know what that has to do with the movie, really. (laughs) He has his own way of killing, which is pretty literal. (laughs) And then if you think you're safe, you're dead wrong. (laughs) Uh, Director Joseph Zito also directed Friday the 13th, the final chapter, arguably the most fun film of that franchise. That's the one with Crispin Glover in it for anybody listening who pays attention to those movies. It was filmed almost entirely in Cape May, New Jersey, between October of 1980 and January of 1981, on a budget of about a million dollars. It was written by Glenn Leopold and Neil Barbara, son of Joseph Barbara of Hanna-Barbera fame. (laughs) Glenn Leopold, the main writer, was also the head writer for The Smurfs between 1981 and 1989. In other words, its entire production run. (laughs) Wow. And The Prowler in the film is actually played by three completely different people. The assistant director, Peter Giuliano, uh, is the one who's stalking them around and chasing the victims. Makeup effects artist Tom Savini was the one wearing the uniform and gloves to perform all the close-up kills. And then, of course, uh, there's another guy, w- which is during the climactic unmasking scene, but I'm not going to say it yet in case our listeners haven't watched the movie for some reason. But what the hell are you doing if you haven't watched the movie already? Um, so, what is everyone's experience with this movie? This was the first time I'd ever seen the movie, and in fact, I had never heard of this movie somehow. I guess I was pretty young in 1981 and not thinking about The Prowler. Sure, sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Too busy milking cows. <laughs> you saw the fly at the drive-in, though. I did see the fly at the drive-in, but that came a few years later. Yeah. Did it? 1981 was popping, it seems like. There were so many movies that came out this year. Yeah. 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 Well, and this was kind of like, this is in the middle of the boom of the big of slasher movies. Mm-hmm. It's like everybody's, I'm guessing that everybody saw how successful John Carpenter was with Halloween, and then, of course, Friday the 13th. And by this point, I think Nightmare on Elm Street came out, even though that wasn't a traditional slasher. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the, the film industry was pretty saturated at this point with mm-hmm. these, so... Um, yeah, I have not had not seen the movie before, and I don't remember hearing about it before. It was never on my radar. And even though like I wasn't old enough, I guess I theoretically was to watch this in 1981, there's plenty of other like horror movies that I've watched for the first time over the past like you know five or ten years. But this one just didn't come up on anything. And so when you said it, we're watching this, and I was like, cool, I hadn't seen it before, so I really like a, a new challenge. And plus, I'm like, ooh, a 1981 slasher, the same year as My Bloody Valentine came out. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, what do we got? What do we got? So I have some thoughts and feelings very and similar. opinions. Sure. They're very similar. <laughs> um, very similar. And one the of other them is one's good. better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but no, I think there's, I mean, it's not a great film or a perfect film, but there's some really good stuff in here. I was happy to have my eyeball see on the screen, you know, <laughs> plus to, you know, I guess check another 80s slasher off my list. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd never heard of this. I was negative 11 when it came out. So. <laughs> Ooh, new math. Is that right? Whatever. If not, we'll take that out. <laughs> so you're born in '92. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. So yeah, you were you were certainly not you were probably not even a thought when this no. came out. Um, um. Yeah, I was never gonna love this movie because I don't like slashers. They do nothing for me. Just nope. Um. Yeah, I watched this twice for this, and the first time, well, by the time I got done, I was like. Hmm, okay. But I actually rewatched, um, I had just seen The Burning and. Um, With uh, Jason Alexander. Yeah. <laughs> young Jason Alexander. Looking really good looking, for once. <laughs> looking pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, that's the Cropsy one, yep. isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, which I didn't realize 
anyway, I had just seen the Cropsey documentary right before I watched that. But um, and I had just watched um, My Bloody Vi- Valentine as well, like mm-hmm. in the last couple months. So for the first time ever. Yeah, the seventies one. Yeah. Interesting. Um, that was actually what I was going to pick oh, really? for this, but I had been meaning to get to this movie because I had seen something about it in this documentary called In Search of Darkness. Oh. Um, it's. I saw that and I wrote on a list of like a it's million like three movies. and a half hours. It's really long good. And the, do you know there's a second part? I don't remember. Are they both on Shutter? They might be, but like maybe a year or two later, another another. It's one really came good. Out. It's oh. really good. Seven hours mm-hmm. worth of Talking Head documentary stuff about horror movies. Um, Chelsea Rebecca, who's listed in the cast for In Search of Darkness, um, is on the Dead Meat podcast, and she went to U of M for film school. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I recommend it. I guarantee that the, the list of people involved in that is probably in the thousands, because they talk <laughs> yeah. to everybody. Oh, really? Yep. Ooh. And that was where I that was where I first... I, so I had heard of this movie before, but I had kind of skipped it because nothing about it. If you look at like the box for it or you read the premise, there's nothing telling you that you need to watch it, especially if you've seen any of the movies that we've already listed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the section where they do talk about it, Tom Savini had said that it was like the thing he was the most proud of that he had done. It was one of his first really big things that he did special effects for. Mm-hmm. And then a bunch of the nerds and dweebs that I talked to <laughs> in that documentary. Mm-hmm. And I say that affectionately as yeah. one of them. It's um, a big bunch of nerds here, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> they, they specifically mention um, a couple of the kills in this movie as being, like, mm-hmm. for the time, shocking and really impressive, and they couldn't believe that. Like, there, apparently there was somebody at the premiere that um, asked the director, like, did you really kill those kids? <laughs> which, which, is, like, yes. which is funny. Yeah. yeah. Stabbed a kid in the head. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking that this must have been so shocking when it came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I actually ended up rewatching The Burning and then I also watched um, Maniac for the first time. Oh, that because he had done upset. that right before. I just put that this. on hold. Yeah. That oh. movie's not fun. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, eh, okay. Yeah. But um, you can really see how much um, Savini's effects. Are, they're so much better in this movie, yeah. and it gave me actually a good appreciation for the special effects in this movie. Mm-hmm. After sure. I watched those other two, and I was like, mm, "Okay." Yeah. Well, when I was watching the opening, like I tried not to. When I'm watching something new, especially for this, which hasn't been very many, I didn't want to read anything about it. I just wanted to go in and put it on. And then when I saw his name in the opening credits, I was like, "Okay, cool. I'm ready for some nice gore." And yeah. I couldn't wait, wait to see those, and they they were great. Those were some really really good good kills. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's funny you said earlier, Allison, that you're not big into slashers. But for me, when I was a kid, getting into horror, it's like that was my avenue. Was mm. seeing like Halloween was one of the first horror movies that I saw, and then I saw all of the subsequent ones, and then all Friday the Thirteenth, and then eventually My Bloody Valentine, et cetera, et cetera. So to me, I was like, we haven't, we somehow haven't watched. A slasher for this podcast yet mm-hmm. and granted it's still relatively new in terms of numbers of episodes but i was mm-hmm. surprised that one hadn't been put forward yet so i figured why not one that mm-hmm. i haven't seen and clearly and, and it turns out none of us none of seen us it. have yeah well i yeah. so i have a hard time with slashers like growing up and being old enough to watch a bunch of these in the later 80s like freddy krueger and hellraiser and like friday the 13th watching all those movies when i Later, when people would say, oh, do you like horror movies? I had a hard time saying I liked horror because I did not like slashers as a kid. Mm -hmm. And growing up, I just equated horror with slasher. Mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking, and I've watched plenty of other horror movies like in, you know, 90s, 2000s, whenever. But I still had a hard time like saying, yes, I do like horror because to me, horror was slasher. So it took me a while to sort of figure out my own little, my brain dictionary of how to enjoy horror or how to mm-hmm. separate the labels. They have a hard time with labels on things. I do the same thing with books like fantasy or sci-fi, which I don't like, but I also have a lot of things that I really love that fall into those categories. So once I was able to separate that, it's like, oh, Amanda, you do like horror movies because they're not all slashers <laughs> or they're not all quote unquote slashers. Right. Right. <laughs> so that's interesting, Allison, that because I, I, I could say that I don't like slashers. Christopher, do you have any favorite slasher movies? Well, in high school, we watched way too many VHS rentals, low, low budget slasher movies, because sure. that's that was the big genre mm-hmm. then. So you know, I dismember Mama, you know, <laughs> Motel Hell, Driller Killer, you know, all of these, you know, 
Last House on the Left, and it was just like, ugh. Yeah. How <laughs> upset can we make our audience is essentially the, the mode for all of those. Yeah, and finally I was like, man, I'm not enjoying this. <laughs> it was I just, wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, without any story or purpose or point mm-hmm. or anything redeeming or good about them at all, yeah. it was just like, this is just nasty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, if you think about too, like there's sort of a formula to a slasher and you've got to get the list of the 10 tropes and pick like four and put them in your movie. It doesn't, they're not like highbrow amazing. They're sort of, that's the point is like a quick fun. And I kind of like that aspect yep. of like sitting down for like fun. a 90 minute piece of trash, but it's still enjoyable. You're laughing. There's some good gore, kind of like what we're going to talk about today. I was just going to say. There's a purpose <laughs> and there's something satisfactory in that. <laughs> I don't know. I 100% get that because I, so I weirdly watched this movie the first time on a stationary bike. And um, as, as, as one does, as one does <laughs> I got to get away. That's been a good way to uh, it's been an easy way for me to get exercise while doing something I enjoy has been watching movies on the stationary. And I've seen some really good ones. Like yeah. I watched Thief for the first time on there recently, but that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> and I, I found about 20 minutes in that I was I was pretty happy with it because it immediately checked a bunch of boxes for me. It was like the atmosphere was just right. It looked like it was filmed through a, a layer of Vaseline. <laughs> it was trying to be clever. It was trying to misdirect you a whole bunch. Mm-hmm. Like there was, there's something about it that just worked for me, even though it was a much lesser version of movies that I, that I really mm-hmm. like that came out right around the same time. This I'm well. We'll have to get into it because I was aggravated, <laughs> I was bored, I was just frustrated. It's like, open that fucking coffin lid already. <laughs> it's like, what the hell is taking you so long? Well, I was yelling, "Why are you bothered? Like, why open?" And he's just <laughs> jumping on the grave. In. He's like, "Let me just crack this open." I'm like, "You're you're contaminating the crime scene, dude. Like, you got other stuff to do. Kids are being murdered at the dance." I wouldn't say he's the best. Cop. No. Oh, I have a note pretty early on that said he is not a good cop. No. Um, well, slasher trope number six, unhelpful cops. You bet. Well, let's let's go ahead and open up the coffin. <laughs> and let's do the deep dive into this movie. Everybody right. feel good yeah, about we're, that? We're going to yeah. spoil the crap out of things. Yeah, So, and it's fine. Because you know what? If you're listening to this and you can't figure this movie out, you might not be very smart. <laughs> So it is the end of the Second World War, and newsreel footage shows us troops returning home from Europe on board the Queen Mary. In a letter dated March 12, 1945, and sent to her lover abroad, a woman named Rosemary writes that she can no longer wait for him. She tells him that so much has happened that perhaps they can be friends upon his return. On the evening of June 28, 1945, in a small seaside town of Avalon Bay, the townspeople are holding a graduation dance. Inside, the class of 45 are swinging to the orchestra's music. Rosemary is attending with her new boyfriend, Roy. The two decide to go off by themselves and drive to a lake where they will spend some romantic time together in a gazebo. <laughs> <laughs> Lights are strung up around the gazebo and along the small nearby walk bridge. Ominously, someone approaches the couple and cuts the power. The stranger is wearing full combat fatigues and carrying a pitchfork. As Rosemary and Roy embrace, she looks up and sees the pitchfork over them. <laughs> Rosemary screams, and the stranger plunges it through the both of them, killing them. Then leaves a long-stemmed red rose in the dead woman's hand. I love the opening. Mm-hmm. You bet. The, the very opening. That, this old black and white scene of yep. the Queen Mary or St. Mary or Mary, whatever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> our good girl Mary. Right. It's a good <laughs> right. Bringing all our boys home. <laughs> it's a good start. It gets you in there. And also, one thing that I thought was funny about that PSA is that they were talking about, like, they were, like, alluding to the mental health of the people coming home. Mm-hmm. Do you really think that they would have done that in 1945? Oh, no, definitely not. No. at all. They were like, they're strong, man, and they're yeah. stronger than they ever were before. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, 
But it's a good start. It's a good like cold open where you're like, oh, I think I'm accidentally watching the wrong thing. <laughs> Is this Night of the Cramps? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it gave me that vibe too. I love the open the first ten minutes, I was just like, Okay, why haven't I seen this before? I'm like, Okay, yeah. this is but this is pulling some good punches. And the the kill was amazing. It's good kill. I really like that with the scream, the music. It was just really and I love the shortcuts to like his boots and then the knife and then the pitchfork, these little squeaky squeakies, and then <laughs> I really, really like the quick little editing jabs in there. Yeah. It, I think it really set it up. And what confused me, though, you're at the dance for a short amount of time, and I want to know who the killer is. And so already I'm trying to get everybody's names, see who's who, who's the yeah. pink dress, yeah. who's the pink flower. Mm -hmm. They mentioned so many random yeah. names, and in my brain I'm trying to, like, save them. Yeah, that's a clue, that's a clue. Mm -hmm. Nope. Yeah, they who's are just Patty. Who's Holly? Who's yeah. Jimmy? Yeah. Right. Like, it's there's like, people we don't even see yeah. again. Why are you confusing me with it's, all of these? It really, I, I was. <laughs> That's this whole movie in a nutshell. Though. I know, yeah. but like, I was what? so annoyed. <laughs> yeah, I'm like trying to be all smart. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna write the notes down. I'm gonna write yeah. these names and oh, Georgie yeah. Wise and so and so and Jimmy Turner and. Do you know yeah. how many times I watched that yeah. opening scene to get all these names? <laughs> <down>? <laughs> and then, like Pat Kingsley and who's Pat Kingsley's girlfriend? I thought it was all gonna come yeah. back. At, 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 I appreciate. <laughs> Like, you know, the false scare of like, you want to try to guess who's going to be. These ones were just stupid. Yeah. They're just like, hey, let's toss one out. Let no, because I figured it out like in the first, the next yeah. scene, you know who it is already. It's like, come on. All this bullshit and you're trying. I'm, I got really upset. <laughs> I'm going to. Yeah. This opening was confusing to me because there's also a 1951 movie called The Prowler. Yes. And I assumed I had the wrong one on. Yeah. It, it was like five minutes of just utter confusion. Like it says 1981. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Um, I, I think I would be remiss to not mention that my absolute favorite part of this opening 10 minutes is the MC at the fucking dance who's turned up to like thirty? Yeah. Hey, you alive out there? You alive out there right after they get killed? And like, and then he's looking at everybody going, uh, 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 when they're all dancing too close and shit. Little brown chub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he was having a good time. Jesus. That guy, that guy was giving the performance of a lifetime. Probably the best acting performance in this movie. Yeah. Yes. I'd say is that guy? Um, I didn't yeah. know any of the actors that were in this. Nope. I didn't no. recognize any of the faces. Oh, actually, um, Chatham is in Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, yeah. I recognized he's the old. sheriff. Oh, he's the old guy. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's about it, though. That's the only. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I don't know what I recognize. The, the sheriff, sheriff is in Rope, which is one of my favorite Hitchcock movies. I talk to Al about it every single time I see him. Sure. <laughs> he's always like, "Yeah, yep. Rope." Mm -hmm. friend, yeah. Of the, friend of the podcast, <laughs> Al Scherzma, with his own podcast, which you should all listen to. Presenting Alfred Hitchcock presents. Yes. Yes. Al yep. is a treasure. Yeah. Yep. It's it's a pretty well renowned, very well put together podcast. We're not at that level yet, but we'll yeah. we're getting yeah. there. We're getting we'll there. We'll see. Uh, if we can do a one eighty from Al, who we all love, to yeah. Roy, who's the biggest douchebag on the planet. <laughs> oh man, the way he was talking to her, and he's like, You don't even have to take off your dress. I, really? Yeah. <laughs> I had a note here that that stands for the rest of every segment every guy that we're introduced to in this movie sucks <laughs> yeah. they all, they're all of them are bad there isn't a single yeah. one of them that is like actually doing anything good except for one later but we're well to too, part bad. of it all of these part of my issue with the movie and is the characters all fell flat i wasn't rooting for anybody yeah they're all cardboard they're they're all total cardboard i wasn't rooting for there to be a final girl i wasn't mm -hmm. And I know that this, you're going to have a lot of bit characters, but they weren't even like cookie cutter characters you would expect to see in a slasher. They were just kind of like there and saying their lines. And I'm like, I don't even care who dies and who lives yeah. and who helps and who doesn't. I didn't. I was I was just upset. <laughs> All what? I'm thinking of is is Divine from John Waters saying, <laughs> sure. kill everyone yeah. now. Yeah, I was just oh, like, I, I didn't yeah. care. Yeah. I, I agree with you. And I was excited to watch everybody get killed. Yeah. Why is my favorite character Lisa? Lisa, oh, I like Lisa. Even Lisa. <laughs> Lisa's the girl that gets killed in the pool, which yeah, was my favorite. Yeah. Right. Oh, and she's a she's a party girl. Yeah, you know. she has some personality. Yeah. Well, she's right. kind of flirting all cute at the beginning. You yeah. know, should I hold it up high? She's got her eighties fashion. Yeah, yeah. My favorite character was the the girl who goes down into the basement. She was funny. Sally, oh. I think is yes. her name. <laughs> Sally, yeah. played by. Like Diane Road or something like I that. I don't know. Didn't do anything else. Yep. But she was hilarious. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. 
My favorite actors were the two white geese that are who are <laughs> mysteriously <laughs> there at night. Yeah. I, I, my question. Is, are they, what are they doing there at night? Is that normal? I don't know. I don't know I much want, about goose behavior. Well, yeah. I, also, I wanted their characters to like notice them well, on I their know. way to the gazebo. Aren't so, you scared? Geese well, bite. Roy's just thinking about sex. He's like, ah, forget these geese. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I have to say, though, I so I wrote geese, and then when I watched it a second time with my wife, she said, those are ducks. Are they? I think Apparently. they're ducks. They're but very they large. They look like ducks to they're me. They're huge. And they get big fluffy mm. butts and shit. But really, yeah. Well, again, my statement stands, or my question stands. Do they do that? Do they just hang out and wander around at night, <laughs> making all that noise. I truly have no idea. <laughs> They're party geese. They're yeah. here for the ambiance. That's right. I have to go back to. You don't even have to take your dress off. Yeah. Yeah. He was. She's. Then he's an experienced like, creep. Oh my! <laughs> Every dude in this is a creep. And then he's like, well, "What about New Year's?" And she said, "That didn't count." <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, right. I just couldn't stop. That didn't count. I just couldn't stop myself. That's and right. And I'm like, also, you just Rose dumped this. Sucks too, you though. dumped this guy yes. overseas so you can like shag whoever you want. But <laughs> right. now it's she's playing hard to get. No, no offense yeah. to her, but because she's about to get murdered. But her dad's the major. Yeah. So, she lives in that awesome fucking house. People are going to see her leaving. But I was still... The, so the whole so lame, though. The first Sorry. time in this was great. Really good setup. I was frustrated by all the character name drops that ended up going yeah. nowhere. But it was a good little beginning. You got to see the school and the dance and kind of get into the vibe. And you got to meet the killer fairly early. Yes. Um, yeah. It was a great s- setup for being... Similar to what you said, Allison, about Night of the Creeps, having that short one before you go to 30 years later. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Um, question for local farm boy Christopher. <laughs> Could a pitchfork actually go through two people? Yeah. I believe one, but two, <clears throat> really? I think so. It's a pretty fine, it's a very sharp point. They are very sharp, they're very fine, and they're very How long. How long are they? They're sometimes so long. What about ribs? That's like hat, that's like... You might have looked out. They'd, they'd go, I mean, they can't penetrate bone, but they'd go right through your ribs. Ugh. You know, the, between Just two your tiny ribs. people. Just... Yeah. 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 I was wondering. Yeah. yeah. And hey, I do give this movie credit for a unique and creative weapon. Mm-hmm. Pitchfork. Unique creative weapon. And I don't know for sure, but had there been like a, a veteran killer before this? I don't think so. I yeah. wish they had done more with that because I think I, that's actually interesting. That, w- that would have been mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But I've got a lot of questions about <laughs> Sure. <Yeah. laughs> that's, that's good. All right. So 35 years later, the town is preparing for its graduation dance once again. Deputy Mark is being a big creep and watching the girls <laughs> put up a sign for the dance. <sighs> Pam McDonald stops by to see Sheriff George Frazier and they discuss the upcoming dance. The discussion turns to Major Chatham a fellow World War II veteran, over his refusal to allow the celebration after the murders many years ago. Sheriff Frazier tells Pam that someone has robbed a store in the nearby town of Columbus and then cut up a kid and took his car. (laughs) Authorities there are afraid the killer is headed towards Avalon. Despite that possibility, the sheriff (laughs) is insistent upon leaving town to go fishing. He puts Deputy Mark in charge, which is stupid. <laughs> he's been on. He's been there for two years. So he knows. <laughs> right. <laughs> Before Fraser takes off, he stops by a convenience store owned by Pat Kingsley. <laughs> One of the employees is Otto, a strange fellow who's the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> we can't handle That's it. We can't. <laughs> we can't. We can't. <laughs> it's the, the, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get through this. Uh, <laughs> One of the employees is Otto, a strange fellow who the sheriff seems to mistrust. Pam and Mark have an attraction for each other and go on a lunch date. She shows him an article that she wrote about the return of the graduation dance and tells Mark that she's concerned about his safety. Pam also tells her roommate, Sherry, that she's worried about the Columbus killer. Sherry tries to calm her friend's nerves while the other girls in the dormitory are excitedly preparing for the dance. Lisa even flashes Major Chatham across the way, who's sitting in his wheelchair in his house. As Pam is putting the finishing touches on her outfit, someone else is getting ready at the same time. But this person is putting on a military uniform, complete with a bayonet, hunting knife, and a sawed-off, double-barrel, 12-gauge shotgun. That's a lot of weapons. 
Yeah, it's a lot. You would think he'd be he'd be real clanky walking around yeah. with all that metal. <laughs> He's but. got a lot of business to attend to. <laughs> That's right. The first time we see Otto, I looked and I thought maybe he's on the toilet. I thought he was on the toilet too. I did too. I thought he was reading on the and toilet. When he said, "I just got to the good part." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I'm trying to figure out who Otto was. Was he mentioned in the dance scene? Right. They're immediately. These are all of these misdirects that they're throwing at us. It's like the shop owner guy seems like a bad guy. Otto seems like he mm-hmm. might be up to something. The sheriff seems like he might be up to something. Every guy. Every guy sucks in this movie. <laughs> and the guy who lives in the basement? Oh, right? Jimmy. Right, because there's, remember, at the very beginning of the movie... <laughs> Jimmy Turner, he takes care of this place and he may or may not sleep out on an old mattress in the basement. Right. Oh, okay. That's what Pat Kingsley's girlfriend says. <laughs> remember, I had to watch that many, many times. <laughs> See, I, I just figured like that's a line that doesn't matter, so I didn't think much of it. Because, but then later, they yeah. go to the basement, and there's an, there's the, one of the guys is down there. It's well, him. And I'm like, I think it's <sighs> him, and he's the MC because he's wearing the same shirt. And what? then... Yeah. The MC is the guy in the basement. The MC is the guy that the oh, so you know. All right, we're jumping way ahead, but this oh. is fine because I made a lot of notes about this. <laughs> These freaking characters that mean nothing. The <laughs> love the guy in 1945, <laughs> and then when they fast forward to him later, and he's at the the dance, he's talking about like, oh, it's it, it's it's me, but I just have less hair, blah blah blah. Like you know, he has oh. these little lines, and then later when that scene happens with the creep in the basement, if you look, he's wearing the it's the same shirt and blazer. Oh my God! He was the so, MC in the dance. He's the MC, but that's not Jimmy Turner. I don't know because I don't know if anybody's names really matter in this. But there's some guy. So Pat Kingsley is not there, but his girlfriend, one of the pink dress girls. I guess I can look this up. So it's in... peach flower girl. The, the girl in the peach dress with the big flower. That's how my note went. Mm-hmm. She was dating Pat Kingsley at the time, and she was explaining who. Um, that guy over there was. She goes, "Oh, that's Jimmy Turner. He lives in a mattress in the basement." Um, so, but that so that Jimmy Turner is not the guy who is the MC. So separately, there's another. This MC guy lives in the basement later on. So, <laughs> please, do you remember? Give me the family tree. The the first guy that dies by the gazebo. Roy. Yeah. Roy. He is pulling his date Rosemary mm-hmm. out of the dance in 1945, and he says. Hey, keep your mitts off my girl. And yeah. then he says, what does he sweep the whole hall with his eyelashes too? Remember that line? And that, that's when she says, well, that's Jimmy Turner. Maybe I don't, I believe you, but I just don't remember it. Oh. I don't yeah. remember any of this shit. Because there's two pink dress. <laughs> there's Rosemary and then Pat Kingsley's girlfriend, whose name yeah. I don't know. Huh. Anyway. And it does not matter. Okay, but that's interesting if the MC is the one. That's even cooler. Okay. I'm almost, I, yeah. I was mad at that basement scene. I'm like, we don't need the scene of these yeah. two on it's a the, mattress in the basement. Also, why would you go? It's such a useless scene <laughs> that it's not in any of the official synopses anywhere. Oh, they don't really? even mention it. So <laughs> You I, know what? This movie should be about 40 minutes long. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> that's the I basement agree. scene is what is the, just all Tom good, Savini scenes. It could please, just be, yeah, 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 I would could. love 12 more kills. <laughs> First note. Oh, wait, I guess everyone wants to fuck Mark and Mark wants to fuck everyone. He okay. does. He does. I also yeah. said that his hair situation is really something else. <laughs> yeah. Um, In a good way or? Oh, it's not good. <laughs> and and there's definitely some some baldness approaching him. Yeah. I was uh-huh. I was looking, I was like, why does he because he if, theoretically if him and Pam are involved or going to be involved. And I was thinking if Pam is graduating from college and he's maybe two years older, I was like, why does he look 40 and she looks like a baby? Uh-huh. And I looked it up. The actors at the time were 20 and 29. So he just looks like oh. older than 29. He's really only 29 when he filmed it. Okay. I just think like the way his hair was and like in his like oh. handsomeness or whatever. <laughs> Christopher's look of disgust right now yeah. is oh. like so he looked like not he looked 29. Yeah, no. I he looked it up. He looks like a, a, a brisk 42. Yeah. 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 Well, which is not uncommon for like the 80s to have these these guys be you know yes, older naturally. but the but the girl who played Pam the actress I really liked her she was very sweet she I was giving me good like genuinely the only Kirsten Dunst vibes yeah. like just wholesome and nice and I I enjoyed when she was on screen even though I still think her character was pretty flat I still enjoyed I was waiting for her to do more I'm like oh this is the final girl she's the one who's going to do all the yep. things yeah. and she does yeah. eventually do some things but I, I enjoyed that actor, and I thought she was adorable, and she just, yeah. Yeah, I thought she was cute, mm-hmm. and then also, I feel like she had, like, more of a realistic reaction to stuff, because mm-hmm. I don't... Definitely. If I was in the situation, I don't think I'd be, like, 
pulling faces and like doing stuff for the kid. Mm-hmm. I'd just be leaving. You're well, right. she was the only one who she was trying to tell Mark. She was trying to tell her roommates, yeah. and even later, like when she actually has a run in with the the killer, it, she's the, the only one who's out there. Yeah. Because yeah. nobody also, believes her. Why would they believe her? All these stupid men. Right. She could do a little better than Mark. Yeah. I think. Oh heck yeah! yeah no shit. <laughs> yeah. Otto. But anyway. Oh man, Otto's oh my brother God. or whatever, the store owner, Pat yeah. Kingsley, sent me on one of many rabbit holes where I was like, oh shit, I'm going to have some sweet trivia for this episode. And then, nope. I thought he was Sid Haig. No. I was like, I'm sure of it. He looks just like he, Sid Haig. 100%. Did all this research? Nope. <laughs> He's like, just not. <laughs> it's like Sid Haig was created to emulate this guy. Like, there, <laughs> he, he, he does have that, like, he gives you a gross feeling, which is immediately, that. that's why I, I wrote down, like, at this point, like, there are so many misdirects happening trying to point you to a killer. But, it, it, like, Amanda alluded to a little bit earlier, you could pretty easily figure it out at this point if you're paying attention to some of the dialogue. But the problem is half of that shit is garbled because the audio in this movie is it's junk. It's bad, yeah. Um, and, I, and again, I think that speaks to it being relatively low budget, trying to push this movie out as quick as possible. But then at the same time, I was watching behind the scenes footage, and there's a lot of crew that worked on this. Oh, really? So, oh, I don't, yeah. I don't watch any behind the scenes. I'm mad. There's yeah. a really, the only one I can vouch for is there is a nine minute thing from Tom Savini's personal. Okay. Um, it's on YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube. And okay. it's like all the behind the scenes, like how they did those effects. And it, it rules. It's cool. It's really yeah. cool. It's yeah, I was cool. too busy watching the movie for the second time and making <laughs> some long, angry notes. <laughs> uh, why does Lisa scream like that when she's showing her tits to Major Chatham? It's like know. terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's the scariest part of the movie right there. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't know. There's a, there's a few... There's a few really funny lines that happen in this sequence. Well, when they're getting ready. Yeah. yeah. First of all, despite what Carl claims, he is not very fast at taking his clothes off. Oh, well, that's a little bit. <laughs> yes. So, yes, that's a little bit later because I made a point to write oh, okay. down some of this um, because he she she makes when when she's in the shower getting ready, she says something like how well he gets horny if he has to wait. And then he later, when he shows up, has a line. He says, well, you know how I get when I have to wait around. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and, then, and then, like, yeah, he makes, like, a bet with her about how quickly he can get undressed. And yeah. then he proceeds to just, like, take his fucking time yeah. walking back in the like, room to take his shirt off. Call and... Weatherline to see if what the chance <laughs> yeah. of precipitation is. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> but from this section, so the... What's funny is the first time I watched the like conversation with the sheriff, it's like there's so much bad exposition happening in there that like I wasn't paying super close attention to everything that he was saying. But upon a second viewing, it's like all of his emphasis on like, don't you call me for any reason while I'm up there (laughs) and like and his weird like hatred of kids having fun, which is a popular trope of slasher movies. pretty quickly points your mm-hmm. attention to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then the movie, it, it, I can't say that it cleverly, but then the fact that it shows you the guys at the store, it immediately takes your mind off of the sheriff because Otto is fucking weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is Kingsley or whatever the hell his name is. Um, yeah. It's, it's ham-fisted, but it still somehow works. Like... <laughs> I don't know why, but I, but like I was at that point in the first watch, I was genuinely wondering who the killer was, even though it doesn't matter Mm -hmm. really. Basically, everything about this movie makes zero fucking sense, right? Like, uh, oh, Major Chatham, your daughter died, so no one else can have fun at a dance for the next 35 years? Like, did he come from the Footloose town? Like, what? <laughs> That's right. And yeah. also, his daughter wasn't even at the dance. She left the dance. That's so Exactly. Come like, on. Am I the only one that didn't know that it was the sheriff? Didn't? I didn't know. Oh, okay. Oh, I immediately knew, and I was I, mad that they told us so early. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like, it's there. He's talking about how the girls don't seem like Pam's type. And then Otto has that line about, like, he's always up there watching those girls. 
Ugh. So there's a there's a few lines, but again, there, you miss them because mm-hmm. you're trying to figure out if he's on the toilet <laughs> and what the store selling him. And, and he <laughs> yeah, I assumed it was going to be one of the kids because I'd just seen my bloody Valentine. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, it's going to be someone random, yeah. and like you couldn't guess at all. But um, yeah, I mean, on the second watch, the sheriff's like, doo, 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 doo. I'm just going to go away now. Nobody bother me. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't remember if they mention at any point that he was a vet, too. There's a couple of offhand lines about people that are veterans, but I don't remember if they say that he is. There's a couple of things when um, Mark and Pam go to see the sheriff when he's getting ready to leave. Yeah. I think I think the second time they talk to him when he has like his plaid shirt on and he's <laughs> getting ready to go and he like gets the phone number, it just looks really fake and really played. Yeah. It just didn't seem... I'm like, he's lying. There's... Yeah. He's a bad guy. Yeah. You're he, perceptive. I don't, I just, I don't, I was also, well, also, so I was, when they were having the dance at the beginning, um, I was paying attention to all the names in the 40s of people, and the person, I didn't know who the, who Rosemary wrote, was writing that letter to. Right, that doesn't, and it, it doesn't deliberately have a name. doesn't It doesn't say, have a name, yeah. but then on the, when they were in the dance, and they're like, oh, whose car is that? And then there are two people who are walking up, and they're like, Oh, what's his name? Oh, they, yeah, yeah. they drop some. They say Georgie Wise, it, and yeah. then someone's like, "Oh, didn't you hear? They broke up." And I, for me, my brain heard George, Georgie, mm-hmm. and then later when we met the police, the the sheriff, and I was like, "Oh, George. his name is George. He's the killer." And but that didn't work. Oh. But th- that's actually not true. It's not. Yeah. It's not the same guy. It's they just said guy. his name, which put him. Yeah. It planted the seed in my head that he was the killer before anything even was starting. As soon as I saw his name, with like, "Hey, George," yeah. and I'm like, "Oh, it's him," but then things actually do happen. Yeah. So I was I was wrong in thinking it was him, but then like five minutes later I was like, oh yeah, it really yeah. is. It's perceptive because I it's easy to miss that yeah. line initially or right at the beginning there because it's just kind of garbled and they're just talking about shit that they. I had see to like rewind dance. it and listen to yeah. it. Um, yeah. And then I had the the second viewing. I had the subtitles on. Uh, mm, nice. Or the caption. He also has a he has a line that I liked that I wrote down twice apparently um, mm-hmm. where he's. He's talking about like, you know, you might you might have some trouble tonight from you know the kids at the dance and and uh, he said something he says like there's still some people around here who won't put up with that kind of thing. Oh my god! And he yeah. says it like really obviously. Yeah, yeah. But is this also where he says that he's going to kick someone's ass across, across the, state, the line? state line? Yeah, I'm gonna start saying that to people. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever the hell that means. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to take you down All the, the cold way to Ohio. Because <laughs> he's talking to the state cops. Uh, right. Right. I think. Who knows? Yeah. Doesn't, I don't even know that it matters. It doesn't like, matter. You're right. They're just like, just pretend you're on the right. phone for this scene. Right. Action. <laughs> he's literally the only police presence during this entire stupid thing. Mark it, doesn't count. So there's nobody. But he's and yeah, they're like, right. hey, kids, stay in the dance. Don't he's leave. Like, it's anarchy. There's a prowler. Yeah. Do your best. Right. It's like <laughs> he, fun. he knows that Mark sucks, which is why he's like, perfect. I, I can finally kill again. <laughs> Here's my foul guy. <laughs> like, they wait. Yeah. Also, why did he wait so long? Why does he only have to murder them during? Yeah. He's like a werewolf, but instead of a full moon, it's just when the dance happens. And yeah. it hasn't happened in 35 years. Yeah. So. It's like he found the letter again and he got all pissed off. Like, Fuck, I remember that. <laughs> uh, yeah a lot of questions yeah we're not supposed to know it doesn't it's just fluff yeah. it's just filler it's all yes exactly um but there is a lot of fun cool things that do happen in this movie <laughs> we haven't quite gotten there yet though. We yeah we're there. not there we're well, not quite there we're, well we're about we're to have a, a murder first, shower though. scene which we're, i'm excited about we're about to be there yeah, yeah. so speaking of that yeah. is carl getting undressed yet he's about to be is he so. still ha- he still he's has still his clothes on it. He's, he's thinking about he's it thinking he's not about horny it. yet yeah he's still got one sock on <laughs> but he's hair triggered so <laughs> so sherry gets into the shower and before pam heads out she asks sherry if she would wait Sherry tells her to leave because she's waiting for her boyfriend, Carl, who gets real horny if he has to wait around too much. When Carl shows up, he surprises Sherry in the shower. Hoping to have a little fun before they leave, he goes into the bedroom to undress, confirming that he is, in fact, horny. (laughs) Suddenly, an intruder grabs him from behind and plunges the bayonet through Carl's head until the other end comes out of his neck. Mm -hmm. The force is so great that the victim's eyes roll into the back of his head. Sherry is still in the shower when she sees someone 
through the door approaching. She thinks it's Carl until the killer wearing it wearing his uniform pulls the curtain open or door. Is it a curtain or a door? I don't remember. Door. It's a sliding door. It's a door. It was very oh, clean. That's right, it was very it was like clean. A frosty clean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pulls the door open to find that he is holding a pitchfork. As Sherry screams, he lunges it into her chest and kills her. Uh two I think two the two best kills. Oh the, yeah. Well I like Lisa. No, in the pool. you're right, you're right, you're right. The shower in the pool. But two but like right off the bat, both of these are incredible. That mm-hmm. one through Carl's head. Worth the price of admission. Is is mm-hmm. like if you're gonna watch this movie, you should watch it for that. Mm-hmm. Um and I, I had seen thumbnails of, like, after his eyes have rolled back or mm-hmm. whatever we're supposed to believe is, has happened there, <laughs> um, not knowing what it was from. And it it is a satisfyingly disgusting kill. Mm-hmm. I don't know how possible that is to go through somebody's skull, no matter how sharp your bayonet is, really. <laughs> I think it's possible. The eyes were more confusing to me. Because why wouldn't yeah. your eyes roll up? I think I had read somewhere that Tom Savini just did that for effect because yeah. it, de- it, it looks cool. Sweet. Yeah. It looks super cool. Um, there was some like Reddit thread about people talking about could that really happen, and yeah. someone's like, "It doesn't matter. They just did it because it looked cool." Doesn't matter. It looked cool as hell. And yeah, yeah. only one way to find out. Let's yep. go find. <laughs> All right, pause your podcast. We'll be right back. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Prowler is tall as hell when he's doing that too. He's like <laughs> nine feet tall. Yeah, yeah. I really love the the shower kill. Mm-hmm. I loved all of the the edits, the cuts from in front, behind, side to yep. side. I mean, there was some the continuity and where the blood was a little yeah. off here and there. <laughs> yes. I'm a real continuity snob. Well, I didn't I didn't care what blood was coming out of her mouth, but really, really, really cool. And I think it was like it was tastefully done due because having like the nude woman in the shower in 1981. It's not just like yeah. all boobs, right. which I thought was cool because it's just, it's kind of like, sm- it's like shimmery and smoky from the shower and the steam. Yeah. And she was just adorable. And I thought I recognized that actress from another horror movie, but I looked on, I, I, I didn't recognize her from anywhere. Yeah. But she was just so cute and sweet. And I just loved her little perky personality. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just felt bad that she spent the entire movie in the shower. Yep. Yeah. Just kidding. Yeah. Yep. Before and after she was dead. The whole movie, she's in the shower. Um, but it was a great scene. Really good kill. Yeah, definitely a nod to Psycho, right? Who her? Probably, that whole scene? probably like, in some way. I oh, definitely like, Psycho-ish. Yeah. yeah, I feel like we see like a shot that's like quote unquote from the killer's view, and then mm-hmm. like opening the thing right to left. Yeah, like her short blonde hair. I don't know. I was yeah. into it. I also liked how it looked when the door was closed, and it was like showing her face behind the um, weird glass. Mm-hmm. It, it just was like very visually interesting to me. It's for as not awesome of a movie it is. It does look really great. There was some care put into the way that it was shot. Like mm-hmm. I like we I forgot to mention this earlier, but the the like getting ready scene where the girls are getting ready and he's getting ready. I love that. I thought that was so cool watching like the mm-hmm. lacing up the boots and putting all his loud weaponry. And, <laughs> and it's it's like it's you've seen it before. You've seen these montages, but like it. It's a good one, and mm-hmm. there's a lot of that stuff in here, and there's a lot of neat cuts. Like you were saying, the one in the shower, it's just like you get that from so many different angles, um, and it just it extends how awful that scene is, and then when the pitchfork drives further into her. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I The gore effects are the star of this movie, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Well, one thing I was, like you mentioned just now, Matt, I was confused by that because you did have these really great edits, these really cool shots, and I'm like, oh, this is really good. You'd it'd be really good for like 12 minutes. And then you get to like a really long dragging piece of trash part of it. It just, it kind of kept pull, pulling me in and out and in and out. And I was like, oh, here we go. Okay, no, this is dragging. It, it So it's yeah. interesting. It's like it had all the, the bits that could have made it even, you know, yeah. something more. It's weird. It was like a bad film, but it had like... You know, 40 minutes of really good stuff, like, interspersed. Yeah. That's generous. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. But for 1981, you know, you have to remember, we have seen all this stuff a million times by now, but not in 81. You True. know, like, mm. you know, all the, the Evil Dead Sam Raimi stuff with Bruce Campbell, you know, like, 
clicking on his belt and like mm -hmm. you know putting on a gun and loading this and that and over and over. It's like here we saw you know kind of the inklings of that with the prowler, mm -hmm. you know, with it lacing up the boots and you yeah. know, mm -hmm. putting the bayonet in and all this other stuff. And so I wish I could have seen it maybe in 81 and I would have maybe more of an appreciation for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, th I, from what I can, could find, it's like most of the reactions at the time are that it was just really gritty and unpleasant, mm -hmm. um, which is accurate, mm -hmm. but, um, you know they don't they don't find all the fun that we do in 2023 in it but um but there were plenty of people that there was some there was some review that said that it was like a a really great depiction of like a crazed veteran which i don't really <laughs> agree with that no <laughs> um, but i think it was pro I, and i assume that what they meant by that was that it was they hadn't seen that in a movie yet at mm -hmm. least in depicted like this um, I love the transition from the girl in the shower screaming to the cake being cut at the dance. Yes. Also, this party and the last party in the 40s are just the most low energy parties or dances I've ever seen in my life. Like, just. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, I, well, we can get into the party in my next little chunk of, uh, mm -hmm. of because, of course, I was extremely. Extremely distracted by the band. Um, <laughs> oh, I have some comments about yeah. the band. I have a lot of fun fact. I have a lot to tell you about the band really? because I did a lot of research, as much research as you can, into the band uh, called Nowhere Fast that was in the all movie. one word, mm. all one word. One quick comment. So while everybody's getting ready, you've got Lisa, Sherry, Pam. I think there was just the three girls. I think that's it. Yeah, Lisa was apparently across the hall. Or across in a different dorm because she comes in and goes, "Hey, you right. Pinkerton girls." Right. Um, I don't know why everybody, every girl has that voice. I'm doing. I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're all ready. Like Lisa and what's his face leave, mm -hmm. and then Pam's about to leave, and then Sherry's still in the shower. How are they fully dressed, hair and makeup? Sherry is just pruning up before Carl even gets there, and they they just leave her, and then like Pam goes to join. Right. What's Lisa and whatever her guy's name is? Paul. She's a Paul. Paul. Oh the my drunk, gosh. Drunk guy. Why do I know these names now? Yeah. Um, because I rewound everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was just like, why is she still in the freaking shower? Mm -hmm. That maybe that was really annoying to me. Yeah. And then when they get to the dance and she comes back to change her dress, she's still in the shower and doesn't question why yeah. she's still in the shower. Yep. Like yeah. that's not right. <laughs> Concern. For the rest of the movie, literally, I'm thinking, oh my God, that water is just, it's just running. running. Yeah. And yeah. Running. Somebody's got it's a maintenance to, nightmare. Somebody's <laughs> got to get in there and turn that yeah. water off. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it runs for a day, like a day. I know. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. So oh. is is there a name for these kind of funny cross edits? You know, parallel editing. Yeah, is that what it's called? Yeah. Like in the Jim Carrey movie, you know, I think someone has to go to the bathroom, and the next scene you see is like a soft serve ice cream. Oh, that's in me, myself, and Irene. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you oh, know, I know what you're talking. I don't think that's 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 called something else. Um, so these kind of funny juxtapositions of very, yeah. you know, and it's similar with cutting of the cake. <laughs> oh I think, yeah, you know? right. Because everybody's screaming, "Yay!" for cutting the cake. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that's called. There was one in the Beyond too, where it cut to a saxophone or something. <laughs> I like it. Lady is screaming that's a saxophone. Yes. Right. Yeah. I don't know what yeah. that's called. Yeah, it's, that's different than Peril. They do that a lot, like in a show like Mr. Show. Yep. I like it when you're listening. There's like a blender sound, and then it turns into like a lawnmower. Yeah. I love that so hard. Yeah, the Fairway Brothers love that too. Like right. you said. Yeah. Oh God. That's, yeah. Anyway. But this is yeah. more like. Well, I guess it come, it's both because you do have that parallel editing of them getting ready. Right. And well, if you think about like a really great scene like in Silence of the Lambs, the parallel editing and yeah. your brain doesn't know where you're going. Yeah. It's it's like this this movie, I feel like even though it's not super successful all the time and in, in, in carrying out, I think it knows that what it's doing is funny. Like especially thinking back to the MC in 1945 with all of his lines, they're they're super on the nose, and like that cut is clearly pretty funny. Like I think it it knows it's being clever and funny sometimes, <laughs> only sometimes though. So at the party, 
Pam is happy to see Mark as he arrives. But before she can talk to him, Lisa pulls him away to dance. Pam is frustrated and annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> when Mark comes over to talk to her, Lisa knocks into him and they spill punch onto Pam's dress. Pam is furious and heads back to the dorm to change her outfit. When she gets to her room, she hears the shower running. Still thinking that Sherry is in the shower, she tries to close the door. Oblivious that Sherry is dead and that Carl's bloody clothes are on the bed and that the killer is still in the bathroom. <laughs> she changes and then leaves, but as she's going down the stairs, she hears something. She looks up to the top of the stairs and sees <gasps> the prowler. She rightly panics and makes numerous attempts to escape the dorm, foiled by numerous locked exits before unlatching one and escaping outside. She knocks right into Major Chatham, strangely, who grabs her by the shawl. Is that mm -hmm. a shawl? Yeah. yeah. She breaks free and then finds Mark. When she tells him that someone has been chasing her, he takes his flashlight and searches very poorly around the dorm. Mark doesn't find anything besides wheelchair marks on the ground, which leads to the sidewalk. So I, at the, in my stream of consciousness notes, I, I was dying to know who that fucking band was because the second <laughs> they start playing, it's like a. Um, so if this was made in 1980, the, the context clues for me were like, okay, they, somebody hired this band to be an ACDC sound alike because mm -hmm. the first bit of music that you hear is just kind of generic rock shit. So I then looked these guys up. So they're like we said, they're called Nowhere Fast, which is all one word. Um, they went on to release a full-length album in 1982 featuring one of the songs from the movie, a cheesy ballad called View Through a Tear. Um, <laughs> and the other two songs that we hear, uh, one of them multiple times, are called Disco Blood and Hard Way. But neither of them were officially released, which is really strange. I don't know why I was so fixated on that band. Partially because, again, the sound in this section was was weird and bad. And uh, but they were they were well, they weren't really playing. But that was the real band. They definitely hired them to get up there and play. And uh, when I looked into what they sounded like later in 1982, when they they because they got signed to a small label and put out a full length album that went nowhere, which is <laughs> funny. Um, they very clearly were like influenced by the police because they went from sounding like foreigner bad I was company. thinking foreigner yeah, the exactly. entire like, time. Exactly. They then were just like, they suddenly sounded like walking on the moon by the police. <laughs> um, and then I also, at this point, I asked, I asked my notes app, is the old guy at the dance the same MC from 1945? Seems like a creep. And then oh. confirmed later that yes, he is, he is a creep. Mr. Turner. It is Jimmy Turner. It is Mr. Turner. Jimmy Turner, mattress yeah. guy. So I don't remember him being called Jimmy at this point because this is this is a point in the movie where even though we're in college, everybody talks about somebody who's a little bit older than them as Mr. or Mrs. Name. They yeah. can't call them by their first names. They're all the adults in this case. <laughs> um, well, Jimmy, the only the name Jimmy Turner was mentioned in the 40s. Right. In a like, yeah. That's it, cool. I yeah. at least there was one little thread they dropped that made yeah some <laughs> and connected. It, and they never they never really resolved that at like even later when he's creeping around in the basement on that one scene. It's just kind of like, oh well, I guess it's I guess it's him. <laughs> That's so funny because up until this moment, I thought it was Major Chatham down in the basement. It's like, how the hell did he get, <laughs> how down, did he get there? down there? Yeah, right. <laughs> What's he doing? Well, how did he get out of anyway? How did he get out of his house? He was on yeah, the second story. I know. And he what's an he elevator? doing in the woods in the dark? <laughs> yeah. Like, why is he right next to the house? Well, I so I had been. I was thinking, thinking that Mark or like the killer, <sighs> not Mark, not, not Mark, but I thought that the killer wheeled him out. Like I thought I was thinking maybe he was working with <laughs> yeah. the sheriff. Dance with me. <laughs> well, just like can you? I don't know. Be the be the like he wheeled him out as a decoy. Yeah. I had figured. So when we saw him and he's mute and he had had strokes and whatever. <laughs> I, f I figure he knows exactly who the prowler is. He doesn't want the dance to happen because he knows who he is and he can't do anything about it. That's that's giving this movie a lot of credit. I don't know if that like they never expressed that, but I figure he's out there to to be like, hey, get get the fuck out of the house or whatever. <laughs> even though there's nothing he can do to help. See, they could have developed that, and that would have been a more interesting subplot. I yeah. think, mm -hmm. right? They but, could have done more with that. Yeah. And if you think about, like, wasn't Otto going to deliver groceries to him? I think he was getting. I think that was alluded to at some point. He I could have misheard been. it. 
because I was thinking who was taking care of him in this giant, giant house at multiple levels. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, most of it's not accessible to him. Right. But I was like, he has to have. I was. I wanted like some creepy assistant, and I was wondering if like Otto was supposed to like fill because Otto also comes in at the end. Yeah. I was wondering if he that was sort of like his little like Otto shows up all over the place in this, you know. Yeah. So because if he's at the cemetery, he's at the end. He's at the store. He's in the street. He's there when the girls ride up there on bikes. Like he's everywhere. He is. So I forgot to mention and on the toilet. I mean, he's just <laughs> the shop toilet. <laughs> I forgot to mention. So Major Chatham's house is um, is something of an architectural wonder in that part of New Jersey. I looked it up because I had mm. to know what the deal was with this house. There's no way that it's not like in a you know historic home society or something. So it is the M. Uh, sorry, the Emlyn Physic Estate. Um, in Cape May, New Jersey, and you can visit it, and they do tours and like haunted tours, and nowhere on their website does it mention the movie The Problem, because I bet that they're disappointed. There were a couple newspaper articles I saw around this time. Um, it was interesting because the title at the time was the Graduation. There were like two or three different local newspapers that said that this was called Graduation. That's funny. But all the locals seem pissed. <laughs> They're yeah. all like, well, I hope they have the premiere here. Or like, they yeah. should have used more local extras. Or, it's like, guys, this is a movie. It's a movie. <laughs> and I think they were pissed that they referred to it as, did they refer to it as California in the movie and yeah. not New Jersey? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and then also apparently the like streamers that were hanging up at the later, um, the later party they like bled onto the white paint, so they had to repaint a bunch of places in this house. So I think that yeah. I think that this production was not super welcome <laughs> there. Um, and then what's the other? There's another where the dance actually takes place is now a hotel called the t -t 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 Colonial Hotel, I believe. Hmm. Anyway, these big, beautiful Victorian homes that are very, very cool and way better than this movie deserves. Although most of the interiors were shot in like a. Um, there was another building that was available to them that was like almost condemned, which is where most of those hallway sequences take place, like where she fuddles with the with the deadbolts and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like none of those interiors were actually in um, either of the other houses. Okay, that makes sense because yeah. it did look like they cost ten dollars. Yeah. But Chatham's, so everything that happens in Chatham's house, they had to shoot with like a, a skeleton crew of very few people because they they have a lot of rules about that place and. Um, which That's makes sense because, cool. again, the house is beautiful, even though it has a needlessly complex roof that will just have mildew. This is also where I wrote, Mark is not a good cop and is very bad at searching. Like, he just kind of he just kind of stands still and shines his flashlight around outside and doesn't accomplish anything. He really. also keeps leaving her alone. He's like, yes. stand here. I'm going to go look for the guy who was just chasing you. Right. Alone. Like, he, he does it a couple times yeah. where he just leaves her. Yeah. And this is also this is this is where we're treated to what you alluded to earlier, Amanda, which is the first really long, meandering, needlessly long scene of him just looking around. It doesn't build any tension. Mm -hmm. It just you're just seeing a guy looking around. I do love the rose as the calling card coming back. Um, mm -hmm. That's 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 fun. It was cool to get in that house though and walk around, and it did make you curious about Major Chatham and mm -hmm. like the pictures and like, oh, is that her? Her name is Frances. Rosemary was written with a letter, so I was I did like seeing those pieces kind of like come together at some point and finding yeah. the box of photos. And again, she's solving the puzzle. Like Pam is figuring out the mystery. Mark's like, ah, yeah. Right. I don't, I don't know but, about all that. Yeah, the house scene still went on too long. Oh, for absolutely. Me. Oh, yeah. It's just like yeah. way oh too my long. God. Yeah. No tension. Nothing. I was bored. I did fall asleep at one point. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I did like, it. I picked a snoozer. Oh, man. It was, well, it really. This whole they could have. I know they needed to have this scene to have her find the box of photos and make the connection with Rose and like his daughter that was murdered. But it really, really took away so much of what could have been even more tension was going back to the house later. I, I just the, by the time we got back to the house later when the big ending is happening, I was mad. I was back in that house for another long meandering scene going nowhere. Yeah. You know, I was just so mad to be there, even though cool stuff was happening. I'm just yeah. like, I don't want to be here anymore. Right. I was already here for 12 minutes. I'm over it. <laughs> yeah. I found a quote from the Courier Courier Post from Cape May, mm -hmm. and they interviewed um, Mary Crilly, who owns one of the houses that they shot in. Um, 
quote, I felt it was a nice thing that they wanted my house, she said, adding that she really isn't all that excited about it. I am 78 years old and I don't get excited about things. Then it says, will she see the movie? Quote, if they send me tickets. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just. Think it's the least they could do. <laughs> <laughs> she just, she probably would have gotten excited about that. That is really excited. sad. I don't yeah. get it. I am 78. <laughs> That's not the reason you don't get excited about things, ma'am. I am done. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, how come none of the emergency exits in this fucking dorm open? I bet that <laughs> I bet that code was pretty different back then. I wondered the same thing. Like, why? So I feel like with exits like that, you're not supposed to have them deadbolted <laughs> to the ceiling or to the to the trim. Locked from the inside. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Also, like I. I I know that this is this is like a standard horror trope that people are just like undo the lock like like you're getting frustrated at these people mm-hmm. when you're pushing your body against something and you feel like it giving at the bottom wouldn't you look up to see what is stopping you anyway I just it, it it's a it's a bit of like horror movie logic that has always <laughs> been kind of annoying it's executed relatively well here but. Um, she also doesn't really seem in that much danger. Like it's just it's, it's a it's a clunky chase scene yeah. to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of like the chase scene. Yeah. I, I I mean it wasn't like good. Yeah. But I wrote the chase scene very good. I do like the look of the prowler though. Mm-hmm. Like, he mm-hmm. he's pretty imposing. Um, yeah, I like that his face is covered mm-hmm. by that green fabric. Yeah. yeah. Which I I read in a couple of places they referred to that as a gas mask. That's definitely not a fucking gas mask. No. But um, <laughs> if it is, you're not gonna if live it is, through. You'll die. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> um, I also love that um, Mark is there to perform his terrible cop duties. I'm gonna go check it out. Stay right there. So you're just gonna leave her alone yep. again. Yep. He just keeps leaving her. Cool. And he does it again and then <laughs> yeah, again. Two more times. <laughs> yeah. Three more times. Yep. Yeah, he's not a good cop. He's not a good cop. He's not even a particularly good also, guy. Also, she needs or, to yeah, cease any boyfriend. level of attraction to him whatsoever. Right. I don't there's not really many other me I guess there are some younger guys at the dance. But ugh. they're all hanging out. They're all just hanging out in the bathroom. Too. Yeah. <laughs> like I, in a weird scene where they're all, they're all just lounging in the That's men's like, room. Are we in uh, National Lampoon Animal House yeah. right. now? <laughs> right. You don't barf in? No. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to hang out and watch. <laughs> yeah. Who? Wa- yeah. They're just hanging out there. I don't think I ever went to a dance where I hung out in the bathroom. So. Following a poorly executed search, <laughs> Deputy Mark returns to the car where Pam is waiting for him. She tells him to check the dorm because Sherry and Carl are still in there. Mark goes inside and goes towards the bedroom, but the door is locked. He doesn't see that there are two dead bodies in the tub. <laughs> <laughs> Pam and Mark then go to Major Shatham's house. It's dark, and the old man is nowhere to be found. During the search, Pam finds an old scrapbook and discovers that Chatham's dead daughter's middle name was Rosemary. She was a girl killed 35 years ago, in case you hadn't somehow already figured that out. The two then go back to the dance where they tell Miss Allison about the prowler on campus. The teacher then tells the students that they should stay put and not go out until the person has been apprehended. Paul wants to leave the dance and find Lisa, but the teachers won't let him. He's so drunk and rowdy that he gets thrown out. <laughs> Pam and Mark take him to the police station where Mark puts him in a jail cell. Angry, de- angry that her date, Paul had been puking in the bathroom, Lisa heads to the pool for a late night swim. After doing a few laps, Lisa sends the ladder out of the pool to get kicked right in the face by the prowler. (laughs) Stunned and knocked back into the water, Lisa tries to swim away and is seemingly unable to get her bearings. The killer then is in the pool with her, comes up from behind her, takes out his bayonet, and slices her neck. Her body falls lifelessly to the bottom of the pool. Um, Yeah, this is... (laughs) I think you're right, Amanda. When I thinking it back on that scene, that is the best kill in this movie because you get the gross knife moving back and forth in her neck, and I was trying to figure out how they would have done that. Of course, I understand how latex works, mm-hmm. but I wasn't it looks sure good. how the blood worked because, like, I can like obviously it's like some sort of prosthetic yeah. uh, wound, but mm-hmm. like, where is the Tube I think it's the... coming from the knife. If you like in that behind the scenes thing when they're shooting it, I think it's like in the knife. But he takes the knife away at one point and it's just her neck and it's still uh, like oozing out into the pool. Hmm. But you could have like a tube or something like behind it or attached to her body. Yeah. Maybe. I'm not sh- I'm not really sure. Yeah. And of course like 
as cool as that behind the scenes thing is, is literally just showing mm-hmm. you while they're shooting it. They're not like talking about yeah. how it happened, but it's still cool. It's really cool. And I do, I like, I like how slow it is and how th- ethereal it looks with the light under the pool yeah. mm-hmm. and the way her body is. And I also liked that they kept her underwear on. I thought I appreciated that. Mm-hmm. It's just, and then it's just slow and it pauses in the way the music is. And then when she does have that slit in her neck and like the, you can still see like the, the blood slowly coming out into the water. I just thought it was yeah. really, it looks good. It was really a good scene. I just thought it was also really just like pretty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just had these really pretty moments. Yeah. yeah as pretty as something like mm-hmm. that can be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, I, the only criticism I have of that scene is when she's kind of writhing around in the water, I get what they're trying to do, but it goes on just like maybe one cut too long because mm-hmm. it then, because she's thrashing around and you're like, why why she, th-? I guess getting kicked in the head would make me thrash mm-hmm. around in the pool too. Yeah, but. that scene disturbed and confused me. Yeah. She's really like jerking around like she's possessed yes. and it was confusing. It's like they it's like they used mostly good takes except for one. <laughs> and apparently yeah. they they did eight I think I wrote down they did 18 different takes of that until they were oh, satisfied. Wow. Um, I mean, if somebody kicked me in the face, I would just be pissed off screaming, yeah. swearing. <laughs> right. I wouldn't be like shaking my head from side to side. But it's yeah. like you had your head, if you were stunned and you couldn't see right. or you were like seeing double or you were, you had your, plus you're floating in the middle of a pool. Mm-hmm. You didn't have your feet literally. Right. That's how I took it. Although it, it was a little, a lot of thrashing. It was, yeah. it was like, I thought I was watching Jaws for a minute. Yeah. Like well, there was the a shark. Also. Also. <laughs> the prowler was under. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> well, here's one thing. Did you guys notice the way this was cut with the band and what was happening? Oh, I didn't pick up on any of that until I watched it the second time. I Mm. had the subtitles on. And they were, the band, what they were singing was narrating the scene. And I even had, I I was. Disco Blood is the song. (laughs) I wrote down all the lyrics they were singing. And then even like when Paul is drunk and trying to leave, the band is singing, like, don't, they're saying, Mm -hmm. don't go. And I'm like, I was just, I thought that was so well done done yeah. and I just could not believe it was happening and I was mad I missed it the first time I only saw it because the I was like wait what are they saying yeah like the blo- I'm like oh my god they're narrating Lisa being more I just thought that was so good yeah that's why you guys need to watch this movie it's true there are, <laughs> it's like this movie is it's dumb as hell and it's aware <laughs> of it but like but it it and it's never overly serious except when the prowlers on the screen <laughs> like it it's like then it then it's like it all like comes right into focus, and then it works. So again, this movie really suffers when the prowler's not there. Basically, <laughs> uh, I Miss Allison's announcement is real bad. <laughs> not not good. Does not convey what's happening well. It's also just bad advice, and clearly no one's going to listen to it, which is evidenced by that scene, and then also where Sally and what's his face go. Um, but that's later. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's the 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 star of that section is the the pool sequence. <laughs> mm-hmm. The prowler kicked her face across the pool line. Ha. <laughs> so, I hate to quibble. No. Do I Please. hate to quibble? Please quibble. Please. So you want to fight, Christopher? Yeah. <laughs> we all love this movie. What the fuck is your problem? We're armed with bayonets and pitchforks over here, but let's quibble. <laughs> I was just a little, uh, it was hard to watch when Miss Allison comes to investigate the pool, <laughs> and she's so oblivious to the blood in the, the water. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was just like, come on. That's how it's right there. Yeah. And, it's like a lot of blood, too. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then suddenly there's this discovery, and it it's just. It's also not a huge pool, as yeah. far as I can no. tell. Like, it, it's, it's not. Insignificant, it, it, but it's not like a lap pool or anything. Yeah, it just looked weird on screen. Well, because like, she was, like, if you go to look for somebody who went to go swimming, you're going to yeah, look in the it's pool. Like, yeah. Exactly. That's the, what, what someone yeah. does. Like, oh, there's a pile of clothes and a towel. Where could she be? Yeah. <laughs> also, what kind, of, what kind of graduation, college graduation party needs chaperones? I think she's a house mother. Oh, okay. Um, I. This is like we're way past it now, but I love the shot of the two bodies inside the shower. That creeped me out. That was one of the few moments where I was like, ugh, I yeah. ugh, I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't understand why the prowler 
kept moving bodies around. Like, what, what's the point of putting Carl in the shower with her? <laughs> and Lisa in the... And he puts put Lisa in the... I guess he takes his, his daughter's body out and puts Lisa in there. Why, that's it's not, not his lot. daughter, though. Uh, it's right. not major. But I mean, Mather right. Chatham's daughter. Right. Right. Like he's, right. She still ends up in the chimney at Mather Chatham's house. I don't know. He's, he's really busying him. Like, there's, <laughs> it's a lot, of, a lot of work. Time like, to clean. He's a real busybody. That prowler. Is the point of him? Is the point of him moving the body so that later on, when somebody, when Mark was in the room, there's nobody in the room, right? In the dorm, I didn't make no sense. I thought it was dumb. I do. Uh, yeah, it is dumb. And that dorm, yeah, there's a lot of dumb. He like hangs. Stuff there's a heavy, heavy Carl, and he hangs him from like the, from shower, the shower head. head. But that is not a load bearing shower head. Is it? <laughs> For the scene that happens at the end, I don't understand. For sure. It There's has to be. Way too many hanging Carls yeah. recently. Shitty Carls. <laughs> <laughs> I do like, the, I, this is also going back a little bit, but like when she goes back to change her dress into the blue dress, which is arguably a better dress mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the first one. When she leaves that on the bed, though, because it has a punch on it, it's next to the bloody clothes, so it just kind of looks like more bloody clothes. Oh, <laughs> interesting. I liked that. Um but again, she somehow doesn't see all that shit in there. She but. also doesn't look in the mirror at all either. She just like throws a new dress on. She's like, I look good. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> do. <laughs> Little cutie pie. <laughs> She's adorable. <laughs> She's wholesome. Um, also, why did she go swimming in the first place? Because she, uh, you know, when you're pissed off at somebody, you go for a swim. <laughs> in your know. underwear? Right. And she, she didn't want to be at the dance where any more boys were asking her, Let's struggle. I wrote oh, that down. God, that is a gross line to say to somebody. They're doing the struggle. Is that a dance? Are you kidding me? Oh, no, I thought I, that. I'm, I'm just kidding. Oh, oh, okay. I am kidding okay. you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm making an endless joke. That's all. Uh, well, Let's struggle? The, that's what I the, that. the thing with the rope in the endless. Oh, my God, I'm in sorry. In the Shitty Carl universe. Say, yes. Okay. This is part of the extended universe. <laughs> right. Did they say the str- the words, the struggle? Did Lisa say? I don't- she No, Ben. No, the guy says, ben come, says on, come on, let's struggle. Or yeah. something like Who's that. Ben? I wrote that down. He's ben. the one that takes Sally to down the to the basement. Okay. Yeah. I had the same question when Christopher wrote that he's dressed yeah. like Ben again. Right. I was yeah. like, who the fuck is Ben? <laughs> I thought it was okay. like the person we work with. Who's, I'm like, I don't know. Um, also, the pool scene has like basically the Jaws theme in the background. Yeah. Anybody else notice yes. this? Okay. Yes. Like what they could afford. To, <laughs> to, like what they're like, we're, we're not going to get sued. They're not going to come after us for this. It's the vanilla ice version. Right. <laughs> exactly. One extra beat. Yeah. I do like that they they had good, they did have some good sound bites to make things seem uh, creepier and more tense. Yeah. yeah. Like they really had some good like strings in there. And there's, a, there's like. During the kills, especially. They did a, like there's a couple of big jump scares that do really, uh, frankly, obnoxious loud audio things. Mm-hmm. Like when the drunk guy like startles Pam or whatever when she comes around. Or anyway, there's a really good music sting when the knife thing goes through that guy's head too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. noted that. Um, also, no, the struggle is not a dance, so I don't know what the fuck that was about. Yeah, uh, <laughs> well, it's it's guy stuff. <laughs> she was for me. I just took it as Lisa was just like tired. Her she was there with this guy Paul. He's wasted hanging out with the guy. And she's like, well, I'm going swimming. Like, she just had enough of his bullshit. She's like, I'm out of here. Oh yeah, she's she's done. You with know, that. and plus too, like it seems like of the group, she would have been like the party one. Like her and him are just going to go get drunk yeah. and be in the pool and take their clothes off and do whatever. Like that's just how I took it. Yeah, like they're leaving. They're the cool kids leaving the dance and going to take, take care <laughs> of business. Go flash Major Chatham again. Yeah, yeah. She's, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> she's the free spirit. <laughs> free spirit. There you yeah. are. Also, who wants to do stuff in, like, a nasty college dorm basement? Like, you guys are adults. Go home and do that shit. Yeah. You were just, I don't know, exploring. Oh, great. There's a nasty mattress on the ground down here. Cool. It's where they store the furniture. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Not when there's a pool. One of the other places that furniture is stored in this (laughs) movie. Well, there's a pool nearby. Just go to the pool. Right. Ben did not get the memo. No, Ben had better ideas. So... (laughs) So she doesn't even have to take her dress basement. off. Oh, <laughs> they're awful. Struggle. They're awful. So <laughs> we're now caught up to the next section. Jeez. <laughs> oh. So Miss Allison leaves the party to see if she can find Lisa. <laughs> she sees blood in the pool eventually and panics. As she tries to run away, the killer grabs her and thrusts the bayonet into her neck. Meanwhile, 
Sally and Ben have snuck off to a spot in the basement to have sex, where they are being observed by a creep that appears to be the old man and MC from 1945. <laughs> Confirmed. Cool. Jimmy, Jimmy Turner. <laughs> Jimmy Turner. Uh, at the police station... <laughs> Kingsley storms in and real sweatily tells Mark that he heard that the kids were messing around in the cemetery. Mark and Pam head out to see what's happened. Mark finds a grave dug up with Lisa's body in the casket. And Pam, meanwhile, is spooked in the car by Otto. Mark tries to reach Sheriff Fraser at the lodge that he's staying at, (laughs) but can't get in touch with him due to a strangely stifling front desk clerk, who eventually reveals that the sheriff is not in his cabin. Before heading back to Major Chatham's house, Mark rudely tries to drop Pam off at the dance, but ultimately she still somehow goes with him for some reason to the Major's house anyway. This is where they just, this is where nothing really matters in the movie anymore. (laughs) We've moved locations a few times. The graveyard search thing is like, feels like it's 30 minutes long for no good reason. And then he's like, look, there's a great, look, there's a, there's a casket in there. I think I wrote that. Oh, no, sorry. There's another very funny line after Kingsley says something about, like, there's kids in the that were goofing around the cemetery. This is the first bit of expert police work from Mark where he goes, the gate is supposed to be locked at night. <laughs> Real dumb. Really? Oh, yeah. Hmm. You better go get on that. Take the, take the scared college girl with you again. And leave her in the car when you get there. Yep. Yeah. And then, like, when he discovers that the open grave in the casket, he just, like, jumps, jumps right in. He just yeah. jumps in. He's trying to pry it open. Yeah. It's like he's not looking at the headstone yet. He's not doing... He just jumps in. He's going to crack it open. Yeah. You know, police work. Right. right. This is what we do. <laughs> and then Pam comes over, and Pam's like, oh, because then you open it up, and it, you have to find... You find that's Lisa. Right. And then For Pam Pam looks at the yeah. headstone and discovers like they put it together that that was who that, right. that was. It's like yeah, that it was Major Ch- like Rosemary's grave. It's just so. It's just. It's, it's so dumb. It's almost adorable. Yeah. <laughs> it's like musical chairs. All right, Lisa's in this chair. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna put Rosemary in this one. <laughs> you also so when the. Uh, when Miss Allison is killed, she is making a lot of noise for somebody that got stabbed right in the throat. Yeah, it should be a lot of like yeah. air. It's noises. like it's still a, it's still a good kill, but immediately kind of ruined by that for me. I think. Um, and speaking of the grave and the headstone, apparently the director was deeply embarrassed about how fake that headstone looked and wanted it removed from the film altogether, but it was somehow overruled. I'm not <laughs> really sure why. Huh. What's funny to me is like I so. I live in a part of Ipsy. I forget the name of the old cemetery that uh, that we walk the dogs through sometimes. But like that headstone to me just kind of looked like some of the really ancient, like late 1800s headstones. It didn't stick out as bad to me. Almost everything else about the scene stuck out as bad. Not the headstone, but I agree. Yeah, I also agree that one scene with uh, Pam and. I have forgot all the characters' names. Pam and Mark? Mark. Mark. The cop. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. didn't know Pam's name until we got here today. Yeah. <laughs> She's the main it's character. Fine. <laughs> My God. It's so confusing. Yeah. <laughs> so he sends her off to the dance. She stops. She turns around, gets back in the car. It's the dumbest. It's one of the dumbest scenes in the movie. It doesn't make any sense that it's there. It's terrible. Yeah. Well, because he... She, the, <laughs> she, it's, a, it's pretend. He... They pull up there. This is his little plan to get her out of the car right. so we can go off alone. He's like, oh, you go back in. He's like, oh, you go check on them. Go to the dorm. Check out them. And then she gets out of the car. He's revved up, ready to take off. And he's like, oh, actually, I want you to stay here. And she's like, whoa, why am I not going with you? We're a partnership now. Yeah. And he's like, I'm tired of you tagging along. And she goes, tagging along? And then she like <laughs> yeah, pauses. Go be a cop and then she like pauses because <laughs> she's upset because this she likes him. Yeah. And she's upset. So she kind of pauses and pouts and turns around and just gets in the car. Yeah. Why does she like him? I don't know. (laughs) She could have... I mean, any it, guy it, there would, would want her. Not that you want that. Any yeah. of these crappy ass guys. Yeah, yeah she, she would have her. Does she think suck. she's more sophisticated because he's older and smarter and not like overly <laughs> trying to get in her pants? Smarter. Well, and he gave her that like that really flaccid compliment earlier. Like you wrote an article in the newspaper. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> it's. He's I mean, barf. I was trying to read into that scene more, like. <laughs> Oh, you know, he's really clever and he's trying to say, you know, try to drive her off for her own good. Or, But it's like, oh, it's just so clumsy. Yeah. He just leaves her alone again. Yeah. yeah. 
for, for some reason in this d- totally desolate part of town, seemingly. No, but you know what? They're going off to a very cool scene. Yes. So yeah, now we're we're getting towards the climax of the movie here. Upon returning to Major Chatham's house, Mark leaves her for a moment and is knocked unconscious by the prowler. Pam spies a necklace dangling from inside of a fireplace and tries to pull it out. Still in her graduation dance dress for I don't know what reason, Rosemary's skeleton falls out of the chimney. Pam tries to find Mark but is confronted by the prowler. <gasps> she runs th- <laughs> She runs through the house trying to get away and hides under a bed. The prowler is now in the same room. Pam makes every attempt to be still, even as a rat, the third animal in the budget, brushes around her head. Finally, Pam gets up and just runs out of the room. She manages to break the pitchfork off of its handle and holds it up for protection as he approaches. Just then, Otto, the clerk from Kingsley's convenience store, enters the room and shoots the prowler. Following some weirdly cuddly smiles and head tilts at each other, the prowler takes out his double-barreled shotgun and shoots Otto in the chest, who then falls dead. As the prowler reloads to shoot Pam, she stabs him in the back with the pitchfork, and they struggle for the shotgun. The prowler pulls his mask off for some reason, and Pam is horrified to see who it is. It was Sheriff Frazier all along. What? (laughs) Sheriff? Pam gets the upper hand, points the shotgun at his head, and fires, blowing his head off. Okay, that flute music. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yes. What yeah. the hell? It's the most romantic thing that happens in the movie is the look between her and Otto. It takes like, it's so long. It's like 10 minutes long. It also is. his expression. He just, it is. I, Both it, of them. It, it, that was the biggest laugh in the movie for me, for sure. And, and I I wonder if they knew like, this is going to be fucking hilarious if we do this. And yeah, that flute music, like it just, it was... It's like I don't know if they were in trying to be like let's let them think let's let them get comfortable and think that the prowler's dead. Of course he's not fucking dead. Yeah. There's still ten minutes left in the movie, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's super funny though. He just blows this man away and then he's like just sweetly looking at. I saved him. you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Otto just turns up everywhere. <laughs> yep. I love the fat rat. I'm obsessed yep. with him. I went back over and over sluggish. and over. <laughs> yeah, he's an amazing actor and yep. I love him. What's under all the sheets? You know, furniture. They have all the everything covered in sheets. It's like it was actually like that in the building, and they were like, "Don't touch anything." Yeah, you can film under stuff. I'm 78 years yeah. old, and right. <laughs> he. I feel like also he needs to be in a different house, home. Like, you know, sell that house. Maybe he has no the rat. No, major major Chatham. Yeah. Yeah. The rat belongs everywhere because yeah. he's in this giant house. So he yeah. lives. You doesn't know. seem uh, ADA accessible. Yeah. No. Who's taking care of him? I, that's what my <laughs> question just, is. Oh, oh, on his own. Yeah, uh-huh. right. <laughs> They're like, and well, where is he at this point? <laughs> no one knows. Stuck outside. I thought he was in the basement. Yeah. yeah did he get back in his house? Doesn't he's seem no one like cares. He's just in the woods. <laughs> he's outside the dorm. I don't think we even see him again in the rest of the we movie. Don't. It's so dumb. He's There's just so... gone. <laughs> I have a lot of questions. He and about Jimmy this are in the basement. Though. Like, <laughs> so Rosemary's in the dress that she died in. Yeah. Okay. Seems weird. But isn't there like a bunch of blood on the front? That's Whatever. what I thought too. But also the photo of her that's hanging in the house. Is her in the same dress? Yeah. Really? If your kid was murdered, do you think you would display a photo of them the day that they were murdered in your house for the next thirty-five years? Mm. Or would you perhaps choose a different photo? <laughs> Maybe it was the last photo. Maybe. I don't see how that's better. It's yeah. like, this is no, exactly I, what she looked like. I'm with you. When she was. Gutted. And maybe, we'll... but maybe our sheriff hung it there. Mm. Our sheriff is the one leaving. He is the... very busy. Our sheriff is the one leaving her the... up, <laughs> leaving the roses. So the sheriff has access to this house and Major, Major Chatham. So maybe he, because he's the one leaving all this roses. There. It's so it makes no sense. Yeah. yeah, I do wish we got more about like his reasoning for doing all of this because revenge. He's Just... a jilted lover. Yeah. He was dumped. He was dumped. He's so just he a, murdered her, just and no other dude. girls are allowed to be with a boy. That's right. Tale as old as time. Old men mad. No sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
can't even struggle around here. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, God, it's such a he could have found lamb. somebody else. That's it's 1946. <laughs> but again, this is where we get into things that aren't discussed about like him coming back from the war and having like yeah. some things to, to go through. Right. So, but this is 35 years later. He's a police. I don't know. He's There's, a sheriff. He's... We're not supposed to ask these questions. No, you're, yeah. You're, we're, we're watching the wrong movie for delving that deeply into it. Yeah. Um, the head explosion's cool as hell. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Real cool. Um, was, I, did, I did a rewind to watch it again. I'm like, yeah. And even better than the one in Maniac. I was like disappointed sure. when I saw that yeah. because this one is so good. I think the only one better than this is the one in Scanners. Mm-hmm. That's the only scene I've ever seen from Scanners. It's a good movie. It's kind of hilarious, but it's a good movie. It is. is it? Yeah. I like it. It's Cronenberg, so it's weird. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a great scene if you watch it in slow motion it's like the head doesn't fully explode it's like the it's like it splits in half Mm -hmm. and folds over and they they had to get it right in one shot basically because he only had one prosthetic head the prosthetic (laughs) head looks pretty funny when it's paused but um (laughs) i like that the mouth is still like part of it yep yep yeah it'll uh it got a little scooby-doo yes it did that a good point. Like and she takes off the mask. I was. Well, he took it off. Well, because right? he takes it off, but part of. He finally is like, God, it's so hot in this Well, because I was thinking that he couldn't. <laughs> can bring, like, all this better. time, he's able to kill and murder and drag bodies all across town without being noticed with this mask on. He could breathe just fine. All of a sudden, in this house, struggling with this this young lady, he can't breathe anymore. And he's right. got to take his mask off and do dusty. the Scooby Doo. He had a big night. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, Sheriff. Yeah. Like, what you right. don't know is Pam's actually an yeah. MMA fighter. Yeah. Right. I wish she was. She's little, Amanda she's Nunes scrappy. or whoever just pop out and just. <laughs> oh, Scrappy. This is a Scooby Doo thing. Yeah. <laughs> so so have Scrappy we... Doo blew somebody's head off <laughs> in one of the episodes. <laughs> He's like, put him up, put him up, put him up. <laughs> well, that, wait, that's a, there's a weird Hanna Barbera connection there. Isn't that oh a Hanna Barbera cartoon? Yeah. Wow. I figured it out. Maybe they. Wow. Yes, yeah, Scooby Doo is Hanna Barbera. That's crazy. That's very funny. Wow. And they were working on. The fucking Smurfs when they were anyway. How come no one has done a Smurfs movie that's like a horror movie? Like there's a Winnie the Pooh there's one. There's a Winnie the Pooh one coming out, or is it out? Anyway, it already came out. Yeah. Um, didn't get that great of reviews. Yeah. But Shocking. come on, Smurfs. That would be terrifying. Which a little they're little terrifying blue without being made into a horror movie. <laughs> How is that not like uh, Gremlins or something? Come on, right. somebody get on this. <laughs> Furbies. <laughs> Furbies. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, also, why would you pull that necklace down from the fireplace? I know. Why would you reach <laughs> up behind in there? To, like, look up in there and see what you can yeah. see. So this scene had two things that I did like. Mm-hmm. The lights go back on. Mm-hmm. That that was creepy for me, actually. I thought, I don't know why. It's like the power being cut. No, not the power being cut, but oh. the power coming back on. Right. That was cool. Mm-hmm. And that's probably been done a million other times after that. But I thought that was creepy because now she's you know, reassured. It's like, oh, Mark found the fuse. Also, the fuse <laughs> must have gone out? Yeah. Why? Because I just plugged in a generator right. or like my the new refrigerator? Yeah, right, right, right. It's yeah. like... Right. Pfft. Yeah, come on, man. Yeah, this yeah. doesn't make any sense at all. Mark's you an know? idiot. He's a bad cop. But I did think the the pendant hanging down, I thought that was kind of creepy. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like... The hell's that know? thing? Yeah, it's like something's up there. Mm-hmm. What is it? Yeah. The body Who looks pretty it? good. Like yeah. the, the gross... Rosemary body looks yeah, pretty yeah. good. And I think, honestly, Pam has balls. Pam does a lot of really cool stuff in this movie, trying to figure it out. She's like doing her best Nancy Drew. She's mm-hmm. a journalist. She sees, the nec- <laughs> she sees the necklaces. She's got her hand up there just feeling around. I want to know what she's touching for that long before the body falls down. It's like a skeleton. <laughs> just, just the face. In, in like a prom dress. <laughs> she's like poking like, her head. Yeah, she's like, <laughs> <laughs> and I did like, again, we got that cool edit of the opposite view of yeah. her, like, it's right. like inside the chimney looking out at her. I like that shot yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, but I thought that was kind of a cool little tent scene, though. So yeah. I agree, Christopher. Yeah. 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 Again, just one of those little things where every once in a while, this movie clicks and it works. Sort of. <laughs> and then we're back to investigating with a flashlight. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> you stay here. I'm all split up. <laughs> but even 
the scene with all of the bed sheets on all the yeah. furniture. If you had redone that in a different way, that could be really tense and scary. Shot it not from like the upper corner yeah. of the room down, <laughs> like it's a security cam. Yeah, it it. Yeah, it's just another point where it drags and she doesn't. Anyway, it's yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We've it said could it. have done a lot more with her being in there and the prowler trying to find her. There right. could have been so much good tension they could have built up. I yeah. bet they weren't allowed to like shoot in many rooms or something and I'm sure there was some limitation reason for it but like man just do do more shoots on a set I was going to say yeah mm -hmm. like yeah. Oh well, they were you know what? There is a lot of not thinking going on. They're probably like, let's get this fucking thing out before my bloody Valentine comes out and everybody likes that a lot more. My bloody Valentine came, came out, out first, six months did. before this, yeah. I, yep. But I think that I think they were shot around the same time though, right? Anyway. I'm not sure. But I bet that they were like, We gotta get this thing out as quick as possible and make money. <laughs> but Um also this final scene is the first time that I remember seeing the gun. I did not know that the, the prowler had a gun. When he when he's getting ready, you see him like when he uh, the montage thing where he's getting ready and the girls are getting ready. You see it at that point. Gotcha. Um, but, but he you never uses never it. see it otherwise. So yeah, I don't remember there being a gun earlier. I don't remember that scene, Matt. But the later on, like when the lights ready. come on and Pam is um, fumbling around the kitchen, mm -hmm. there is a gun rack on the wall, and I see two guns, and there's one missing from the middle. So part of me wondered oh. if he grabbed it from that, but apparently no. Yeah, it's like the, it's like after he puts the hunting knife in his boot and then his bayonet away, he then like checks the shotgun and and cocks it. And okay. Like, yeah. So he he has it, but he he doesn't use it until this point. So, well, he doesn't use it. All right, and last but not least, <laughs> the next morning, Pam returns to the dorm. She goes into the bathroom. Yeah. She goes into the bathroom in her dorm room and opens the shower. The shower is still running. Sorry, Christopher. And Sherry's body <laughs> is still on the floor of the tub, and Carl is hanging from the shower head by his tie. Suddenly, Carl's corpse reaches out to grab her. She screams, and the screen cuts to black. The most strange ending to a film. Just a like Why? needless little. Well, it's like Carrie, you know. It's like I'm sure that it's like, oh, that was cool. Let's do what they did. Yeah. Let's do. We, we still have. The, you still have those contacts. Put those back in his head. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Let's do this. Ending. He's just hanging up there. Like, guys, can I go home now? Depending on where you read to, it's like people are like, oh, it's a supernatural ending, or it is just like, oh, she's having a dream. It's but like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre ending. It doesn't matter. You know, it's just like... It's a bad ending, yeah. in my opinion. It's, it's, some, it's, people, some people love it. I'm are not you one of them. kidding? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. How else would you end it, though? Yeah. I, that's true. I mean, I don't like, think it's a good ending. I don't think it's a bad ending. I think it's just a ending. that it, it works fine for this. I mean, I was underwhelmed, but I was also really glad, oh, good, it's over now. Yeah, right. right, um, right. But I don't know what else you could do. Like, do you want to wrap it up? Do you want her, to, her and Mark to be talking outside? You end it with Mark losing his badge, losing his job. And she kicks him in the balls, and then the credits roll. Oh, no. And then he pulls that prowler thing over his head. That would be oh, cool. Oh, and then we have another prowler. But, you know, hands. well, our sheriff is dead, and he was the murderer, so the deputy sheriff, Mr. Mark, is now going to be the town sheriff. So Pam, being Pam and being in distress and still being in love with him or whatever, she's going to realize that he's the one for her after all, and then they're going to be, he's going to be her number two because she's little Nancy Drew. Mm. He's no Ned. <laughs> <laughs> He's, yeah, yeah. I mean, my vote would be for Otto for sheriff, but he's dead too. He's dead. I don't he's know how else you end dead. it. Though. How else do you end it? I would have loved like, a, like a, just some little wrap up about like his motivation. Like, oh why? Like, oh yeah. he must have snapped at this, or like he never got over her. Like, just some little like. I would have accepted like another cliffhanger thing of just like somebody setting a rose into somebody's hand or something. Like that'd be cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you know. Thankfully, thank God they didn't make more of these. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or maybe even a scene where like things are kind of calm and quiet and you see like leaves, you know, rustling down the sidewalk or something. And then something happens on the side and you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. Or like a pans down to the cemetery and right. I don't know. So think of the Jimmy's ending walking around to oh. Terminator, the first Terminator. Sure. It's beautiful, it's ominous, it's awesome. There's no action whatsoever. She's buying gasoline at the gasoline store and you know, she just says a storm's coming. And it's so such a good ending, mm -hmm. right? 
So I don't know. Think of something. Yeah. <laughs> like right. it's not my job. Right. Right. I mean, you anything know. else. Right. Yeah. Do something. Yeah. You know, but right. not that. Any further notes from the last bit there or anything? Or are we ready to We're ready to vote. Created. Like the timeline and the time frame of this movie is really bizarre because Sherry's in the shower the whole time. Mm-hmm. Pam or Mark or anybody <laughs> else, nobody else goes. Sorry, I brought it back up, you guys. Nobody else goes back to the dance, back to the dorm. Yeah. The timeline's all off to me. Like, does Miss Allison still have all the kids still hold up there? I mean, <laughs> they're no, all she's still dead. There. Well, yeah. she's dead, but I mean, Some where of them are they? Listen to her, they're <laughs> just like, we're not allowed to leave. Is Paul still in jail? Like, <laughs> sleeping it off? I yeah, don't know. I right. just. I just have so many questions, but I don't care. Are Sally and the and the struggle guy still struggling downstairs? Is the creep down there? Yeah, like, that's a threesome now. Yeah. I, I <laughs> where, think they where have the dance next year? Nope, like, yeah, there's just there are too many like. <laughs> The, yeah, it's so, and none of it matters. That's the thing. The whole time I was watching, it, nothing matters. Yeah, it's like watching Lost. But that's kind of no. fun, though. It's fun. Oh snap! I'm sorry, wow, someone brought out the pitchfork. Mm. <laughs> All um, right. Well, if we're ready to get into scare meter and and rating, uh, who would like to go first? <laughs> <laughs> Who would like to shit on this movie first? <laughs> so I'll give it a crack. Um, as always, discussing it has raised it up a whole point, and this is being very generous. Uh, I'm going to give this a four out of ten. Ooh, that's a lot. Sure, but I give it. At, you know, I almost give it one point for every great moment in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so what was the fourth? <laughs> <laughs> I know I started counting on my hand how many good kills there are in it. Well, I, so Pitchfork, mm-hmm. Tom Savini. I like the chimney. <laughs> I like the retro introduction. Sure. And uh, the lights go back on. Oh, nice. So yeah. I should have given it. Even five points, but no, that was no. way too many. To. Go, yeah. with, go with your heart. Yes. So that was four points. And I'm going to give this a one on the scarometer. Although, yeah, I could go higher on that, but I'll let all of the rest of you cover it. <laughs> I will also give this a four out of ten for the official viewing ranking. Um, That's also what you gave the Endless. Yep. And the orphanage. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Two out of on my own book, a two out of five is like a pretty good mark. Like this should be a one in the half. I don't think that my mom would have said that on my spelling test. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a four. I didn't. I didn't hate it. Your I mom is wrong. I did not hate this movie. There's a yeah. lot that I've complained about or questioned, but there were enough really solid elements, especially if you're lo- lo- watching a slasher from 1981, in the middle of this like slasher boom. It had some unique elements. It had some really cool shots. It had some really, like, amazing kills. It's worth it just to watch Savini's work on these amazing kills. Um, not just to look up the YouTube highlights or, if, you know, if you've gotten this far and haven't watched it yet. I don't know. I mean, what the hell are you doing you're, you're not going to. <laughs> if you're, you're listening, to the, you know you're not going to watch this, this movie. You've listened to the episode. You're curious. Just go to YouTube. Watch a couple of the really cool Savini kills. They're totally worth it. Um I do wish the characters had a little more depth. I really wish I was rooting for that final girl. I wanted, as a viewer, some of the the tropes that I'm supposed to do as a viewer of a slasher. I didn't get to do those. I was just really frustrated, and I felt I found out or thought who the killer was too early on. Um, But there was some really cool stuff, and I was, I mean, the first 10 minutes, I was like, yeah, why haven't I watched this yet? This is cool. I'm glad Matt picked this. And I'm so glad that you still picked it, and then we talked about it, because that's what we're doing on this podcast. And I know we were all excited to talk about something that we've not seen before. That's a that's a new experience for us four sitting here in this room mm-hmm. on this podcast. So that was cool. I think that's really cool. And we're not here to watch 10 out of 10s. We can't watch Alien and Silence of the Land. Like, come on. We can't watch all nopes. This is, this is the kind of stuff I want to watch and talk about because I feel like it's more enjoyable and not more enjoyable, but it's just a different and fun experience in and of itself for discussing like silence of the lambs you just have a different conversation and there's so much bad horror movies out there it's so fun so i'm here um oh did i get my horror rating no nope. horror rating oh uh let's do 0.5 Ooh. i was gonna do zero but i'm just gonna do a 0.5 there are a couple of jump scares um yeah so yeah. that's all i gotta say about that 
Can you also, do you remember the name of it in German? What was it? The Fork of... <laughs> the Fork of Death or Die something like Forca that? The Fork of Death Totus. Yeah. Fork of Death. Mm-hmm. That would have been a terrible <laughs> title. Rosemary's Killer was even better than that one. Rosemary's Killer. And then I just actually, while I was looking for the runtime, I found another one. It's also known as Most Likely to Die. <laughs> what the crew? <laughs> because... Yeah, exactly. Because of graduation, but that—that's like a European. Oh. It's clunky, like oh. everything else with this movie. Yeah, so this movie stinks. Uh, <laughs> 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 it was fun to talk about, um, and I am glad to have seen it because now I never need to watch it again. And I don't think that I would have watched it. Um, just this isn't really my genre. Um, I will also give it 4 out of 10 because of the strength of some of the kills. Mm -hmm. The pool scene was really cool, and the, um, what's the knife thing called through the head? Bayonet. Bayonet. The bayonet through the head is, like, so cool. Mm -hmm. I rewatched a bunch of other slashers I had seen to compare it, and nothing compares to it. It's it's just top-notch. Um, so 4 out of 10, um, and then Scarometer, I'll give it a 1. Um, I don't like the way that his eyes are white when the bayonet goes through his head and his his head does this weird like shaking thing Ugh. don't like that at all <laughs> so just that alone is a one for me so i will echo most of your thought this this, this movie did not scare me um, what <laughs> not not even really a little bit uh but the kills are scary Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, like you said, the, the bayonet through the head is like, I, that got a big audible gasp out of me. Like it, it looks great. It, that, that alone knocks the score of this movie up for me. Mm-hmm. The other, most of the other kills are really good too. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a D a one on the scare meter rating. Overall, my instinct says, and I'm going to stick with it's a six out of ten for me. Okay. This is not a movie that I love, but there are points where this movie really clicks with me, and there were points when I was watching it the first time where I was like, "Yes, this is contrary to what Allison said. This is my genre. This is the kind of thing that I like." Um, you know, I coming from watching the Halloween movies and Friday the Thirteenth and My Bloody Valentine slashers are just like what I came up on um and this one missed me uh i understand why um it's it's not great it drags here and there but man when it works it does just kind of work for me um i don't think i will make too many other people suffer through it Uh, it won't be a movie that i will watch every year during spooky season or anything but man if nothing else you gotta watch it for the kills mm-hmm. and for the little romantic scene with Otto and oh my god whatever the hell or Pam um, towards the end I think that's what kicked it up to a six for me it was an experiment to pick something that none of us had seen I think I liked that because we all came you know we, we were able to shit on something for a change instead mm-hmm. of being like I love this movie and you better like it too. <laughs> you know I, uh, I'm going to try next time to pick another thing that none of us have seen, or at yeah. least that I haven't seen. Yeah, good What's luck. You? I've seen a lot. I know. You've seen a lot. <laughs> but if I pick another shitty slasher, I might be able to surprise you. I think nice. we've picked some other things you haven't seen, too. But also, oh, I, I mean, mean... all of us. Like, oh, the, all of us haven't seen? If there's seen? a way that I can find something that we have I'm surprised all four of us. I, I'm surprised I haven't seen this movie. And mm-hmm. that was just dumb luck. Like, I, when I sent that out, I hadn't seen it, but it was a surprise to me that none of you yeah. had seen it or... or Heard of well, because even because I think for Night of the Creeps, right? No, three of you, you all three of you hadn't seen it. That's true. Mm-hmm. Or for End- the Endless, none of it. The, well, yeah. two, no. Christopher and I watched it, but forgot we watched it. <laughs> but I think for Night of the Creeps, all three, three of you hadn't seen it, right? That's Anyways, true. it's just fun, yeah. and also it's not even if like I'm picking a movie that I really love and want to talk about, somebody. Allison is going to not like it, and that's also what's amazingly fun is to it digest yeah. a piece of art. You know, right. like yep. that's fun. And that and and dissecting this movie was fun. Yeah, about as fun as the fun parts of the movie were. Yeah. So. Well, the movie was just frustrating because there were these really good parts and really good kills, and I, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I like it. And this is no, it was just frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, do you want to go hang flawed. out at Major Chen's house again? <laughs> yeah. No. 
I'm no. breaking this guy's house again. No, I had a hard time watching it like two times in one week. And I guess there was three weeks apart. I think mm-hmm. it was three weeks apart. But watching for the second time, I was just like, oh, the boring part's coming up. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I was getting like distracted and doing other things. Um, yep. Anyway, so Matt, thank you for bringing this, um, this slasher to our table and making us watch it. For sure. Yes. Um, I also just want to say the killer design is cool. I like his whole get up and his outfit yeah. and yeah. Yeah. I do want to know more about I think that's a cool idea of having this um this former soldier coming back and getting revenge and having some like things he's working through and yeah. yeah. Coming back from war, his girlfriend's gone, he's, he's lost. Doing a little bit more than yeah. working through his yeah. great <laughs> yes. yes, it's true. <laughs> He's keeping his weapons sharp. Right. But a little bit less than Rambo. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, if you like what you heard today and you want to let us know, you can email us at whatscaresus at aadl.org. Thank you for joining us. This has been What Scares Us. Mm-hmm.